Ladies and gentlemen, pimps and hoes. Okay, hi. This is YouTube Can Be Great, and this is the Black and Crew Chicago Season Six Episode Three Review. I have not done a Black and Crew review ever. This is my first time doing the review. I don't know why I haven't been doing it because I watch it and I watch Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta and all this stuff. I'm gonna probably start doing reviews on those ones, but because of school and work, I keep thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time. I just got accepted into the graduate program, not the graduate program, but the graduate advancement into candidacy where they approved my thesis. So I get to work on my thesis, my proposal, and hopefully I graduate on time with my master's degree. So I've been doing that. So I limited the amount of videos that I put out there just so I wouldn't spend too much time doing it. However, I like this season, Black and Crew Chicago. And so I feel like now that I'm done with this love and hip hop nonsense, I can go ahead and maybe add that to my list. So here we go. So a little bit of a recap since I haven't done it. We got Charmaine and Jess. Jess is the New England, London, beautiful accent lady who I love the way that she speaks and how authentic she is. They have their own shop there and in the tattoo business, but I don't know why Charmaine is doing it. She can't tattoo or shit, so I don't know how she has a tattoo business. Maybe she's a silent partner and she's just making the money off of it. Or maybe it's just like a sham because of a show because we all know that sometimes these shops are made up. It's just like a setting for them to all meet up and act out. Char and Neek are officially married and they have a bun in the oven. And Neek's Haitian mama is not feeling it because she feels like they were heathens. It is unchristian like for them to go out and not only get married without their family with a priest or with a with a pastor or somebody of, you know, holier than thou to marry them. But they are also copulating and having sex out of wedlock. They, you got this girl. She thinks this girl's a Jezebel and she is corrupting her innocent son because she didn't got pregnant with him and they weren't present to even witness their marriage so she is not happy then we got uh ryan who's who's been grieving a family loss in addition to that he's also grieving the official end of his relationship with rachel that we've seen for an entire five seasons of then going on and off and on and off it is finally over and he's having a hard time accepting the realities and really complaining about the situation because he is now sleeping in the shop itself night mag so here we go we got Charmaine at the tattoo shop and the girl's telling her that just telling her that she needs to learn how to tattoo and that she got to do that if she's going on a tattoo shop that they can teach her how to do it. I don't know as a tattoo artist if you can learn how to tattoo if you're not good at drawing in the first place, but I don't know. But they want to teach her. Charmaine takes this moment to let them know that she is pregnant. She's being, she's ready to pop. And this tattoo artist named Plug decides to go in the confessional and say that no wonder she's been busting out her clothes and getting big. It makes all sense now because now she's fat getting fatter she's getting fatter because she's pregnant and it all makes sense as to why she's gaining weight and i was like i can't people's opinions you just can't help it that's what he said out loud and then jess decides that as a celebration for her having a baby they're gonna have a pajama party she wants to throw a pajama party and she wants to have everybody come and enjoy themselves being sexy and they're gonna give her charmaine juice because she's pregnant they're all the rest of them are gonna get lit drinking alcohol then the next thing we got, Neek's mom does not like Charmaine, of course. I'm going to call her Jezebel when Neek's mom is around. She is a Jezebel. She's Mary Magdalene. She is the girl who corrupted his son. And now she feels like they're having a bastard child that's going to be her grandchild. So she's not feeling Charmaine. She's basically blaming Charmaine when Neek and Charmaine were the ones who made the decision to get married and have a kid together. She's acting like her son is not to blame in this entirety of the situation like all mothers do when they feel like they're losing their son. They're going to blame the girl and act like she's the one that's crazy. But to make things better, Charmaine decides to make an authentic Haitian uh, meal for her to show that, you know, she really wants this to be a family. But what Charmaine don't know is you can't please an, a black woman like that. Haitian women, Jamaican mothers, African parents, mothers, they are straight up strict. When they make up their mind that the sky is green, not blue, you are going to have to go through heaven and hell to make sure that they understand that the sky is blue. They will not change. This is their opinion. They're going to stand in it. Because after Charmaine was done working hard making the food, all she could do is complain. This food is salty. I'm going to die of thirst. I'm going to choke. Give me a drink. Charmaine gets offended and she leaves the room. I love how Neek defended his woman, even to his mom, and saying, you know what? She worked hard. She worked. She's pregnant. She's trying to do this for you. You shouldn't have been, you know, talk to her like that. She doesn't need all this when she's going out of her way. This was a nice thing for her to do. And you complaining that she gave you paper plates instead of a regular dish. Talking about, but yes, you served me with a glass plate, not paper plate. Listen, Queen B, stop, please. The next one we have is Ryle and Ra Ra uh, Rachel and Ryan are hanging out with their son at NIMAG. 
and Rachel finds out that Ryan's been sleeping at the shop and from her kid and she decides that she wants to talk to him privately and let him know that it is not appropriate for him as a father who has enough money to be sleeping at a shop I personally think that Ryan did this as like a dramatic gesture. He knew that his children were going to snitch and tell Rachel that he's living at the shop. He wants to come off as if he's miserable and he's torturing himself because he's free, he's sorry and he wants to come back to his family. So he's not even going to try to get a place. He's just going to sleep in the shop and torture himself some more so she can forgive him and see that he's really trying. Personally, I think that was bullshit. You got kicked out of your house, you have kids. You have money, find a place temporarily, sign a six month lease if that be why you work on fixing your relationship. But it looks like Rachel is fed up. I never liked Rachel. I thought that Rachel was a little bit of a snob. I didn't like her aura and the personality that she gave up throughout the season. I prefer Kat. However, if I don't like the way that Ryan handled her because they were supposed to be together. And at this point, she's not only angry, she's resentful and she's bitter. She forgave him, but you cannot on national television embarrass me to the magnitude that you have embarrassed me. You were out here eating some girl's puss all summer. You were in the shower with Kat. You had this girl who you were screwing around behind my back, had the audacity to come to my face and put me on blast in front of the producers. It was humiliating. And I've been with you before you even became this wealthy since we knew each other. And you still keep fucking around on me. No, there's only so many chances you can give somebody before you realize that the person is taking advantage of your forgiveness. I forgive you, you do it again. I forgive you do it again i forgive you do it again i don't have any more forgiveness to give because this is a pattern with you you keep messing up and saying you're sorry and you think that because you do this grand gestures of sleeping in a freaking in your shop i'm gonna come back and take you back because our kid's gonna come back and tell me mom he's sleeping in the shop you know please forgive him so he can come back no i'm not gonna do that so rachel told ryan that she's done and she don't want to be with him now the next thing we got is Jess is out with uh, Fly uh, Tatted and another dude, and they're out. She's looking around. They're basically helping her get food. You know the mild sauce of the mild sauce, the mild sauce, helping her kind of get accustomed to everything. And they're talking about Chicago and how Black people are treated compared in London compared to United States. And in this situation, she's absolutely right. And let me tell you why. My fiance and I recently traveled to Europe this past summer. We went to UK. London specific we went to Amsterdam uh, Netherlands and then after that we went to Vienna Austria then we went to Rome Italy and then we finally stopped in Paris France all of which we enjoyed because we got to go to the um what's it called the red, the red light district of Amsterdam we saw a lot of things what I realized even the cab drivers and everybody there they love black people in those countries because even the cab drivers, the Uber drivers were seeing me and my fiance and one of them was Arabic guy and he's bragging, my girlfriend looks like that too. She looks like that, she's like the same complexion. I saw a lot of biracial couples, black and white together and they did not blink. When I was at the airport, these old white men didn't have a problem staring at my ass and they made it so obvious my fiance started getting pissed off. When we went to a pub, this guy is offering me a drink. Come here, I only give drinks to beautiful ladies and he doesn't even give a damn my fiance is there. They love us and they treat us better. I even had a store owner tell me that if I were to steal something in the store, that the store owner may not even say shit to me because he's more afraid that the government will go after him if he wrongly accuses me, they will fine him. So nobody wants to deal with us. And he said that even if I called the police to come and help me, if they weren't doing nothing, they would drive me to my location. And they really did do that. So she's right, Jess is right. Not that racism doesn't exist there, it does. But it's not to the magnitude of what we have to tolerate in this country because people don't want to lose their privilege and they need somebody to be at the bottom so they continue to keep that privilege. So they're discussing it, especially in places like Chicago where violence and death is at a high magnitude, unusually high. They're discussing this and Jess makes a point that y'all need to come to London because y'all won't be treated like this. And I agree, because I wasn't treated like that when I went. I enjoyed myself. Hell, my sister didn't even want to come back. She's like, why do we have to go back? <laughs> this place is so much calmer and nicer, and they treat us better. Anyway, the next thing we got is Ryan's at the shop tattooing, and he's basically victimizing himself, talking about how if people don't want to forgive, you know, they don't want to forgive, you know, I've tried to fix my relationship, I made some mistakes. She just doesn't want to let it go. She can't. Boy, shut up. There's only so... She doesn't have nine lives. She just... She can't keep forgiving you a thousand times. It's only... Forgiveness is forgiveness. It's a gift. And when you get that gift, you don't abuse it. You did. This is your reality now. Deal with it and get yourself a place. Then we got a tattoo artist, Drea and Zach on a date. Drea is absolutely beautiful. And Zach is on a date with her. But they work together. They're co-workers. Kind of like the Charmaine and Ryan situation. The Cat and Ryan situation. 
the foreign, I think Charmaine's situation. It's like a repeated cycle. Y'all want to date each other. And Dre is saying that she wanted to keep the relationship kind of low, low because she doesn't date coworkers. And I'm sending it to myself, this gonna come out, so stop it, please. The next thing we got, you got Don, and who's now Night Mag manager at his house, is being a dad with his two sons, Ashton and DJ. Four, Uncle Four comes to come and kind of like wash the kids to get an idea of what it's like to be an uncle. And uh, um, Don is letting him know that after everything he went through, getting into trouble with the law, all that stuff, he needs to settle down. If not, he needs to settle down so he can get the puss. Because you know when you go to jail, you ain't getting the puss. You getting the, something else, but it ain't the puss. And he, if anything, of him not wanting to go to jail to have a family, that should be enough to keep him out. But he was overwhelmed. He can't do this, kids. The kids were too much for him. I don't think he's ready to be a father, but he's a good uncle to them. Then we got Charmaine and Neek's mom face each other. Charmaine decides to check her, which I think it was long overdue, and tell her she needs to butt out. You are a grandparent. You are a, an extended family member at this point. I see you as a mother. I love you. But the way you treat me is unacceptable. And I feel like for some parents, you got to put your foot down because they're going to ride your back until you put your foot down and let them know that you're not the one to be, to be screwed with. And that's what she did. And I was very proud of her because he put Neek's mom in her place. She now switched you know, sides and said, I love you as a daughter. I just think that you know my kids should be, my grandkids should be raised correctly. She was basically questioning Charmaine's ability to become a mother. Like, who does that? I'm glad that Charmaine put her in a place and get it right. Because she ended up apologizing and now they're on a good note. The next thing we got, Ryan and Mason are working out. Her, his, I think it's Mason, his son. Ryan discloses to us that he is part Japanese because his grandmother is full Japanese. His son is trying to get as big as him and as buff as him because Ryan is sexy. If not that, that man is fine. He is fine. And his son wants to be like him. But Ryan is having a conversation with him, telling him, you're going to be taller than me. You're going to be bigger than me, but you need to give it time. And he's being impatient because, you know, you want to be like your dad. I know my, my fiance's kids want to be like him and he's buff as hell. They want to join him. And Ryan now lets him know that he's going to go look for a place, a condo for them, because he wants to get them situated. And his son being as spoiled as they are, say, I want a pool. I want my own room. Ryan's like, I didn't even get this choice when I was a kid. But of course, they work hard and you want to do better than your parents so you can do good for your kids. And your kids in turn can do better than you. And the cycle just keeps repeating to where you just build your family over the generations as opposed to sinking. So he decided to go and find a place because this is his new reality and his son approves. The next thing we got, their Justice Pajama Party. You got everybody there, Dre and Zach. Charmaine is turned up even though she only drank juice. She out here twerking and enjoying herself. They decide to play Truth or Dare, and they decide to play Dare. Zach decides Dare and decides that somebody's going to lick, uh, I think, whipped cream or something off his belly. He picks Dre to do it because he's attracted to Dre, and he's trying desperately not to touch her in that lingerie. She decides that even though she doesn't want anybody to know that they're dating, that the best approach to keep that secret is to lick whipped cream off his body and as a final event, shove her tongue down his tonsils and suck all the life out of him in his lips. And of course, everybody's looking at her like, um, is this a joke or is this something that we're missing? Because we just told you to lick it off of him. We didn't tell you to stick your tongue down his throat, <laughs> but she did. And she enjoyed it and we all enjoyed the show. So technically, we all know that something's going on at this point. It ain't no more secret. After doing that, Jess says that she can't twerk, darling. She can't twerk, so she's not going to try. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, Jess is beautiful. I love her. And we got Dre now twerking, and Fly decides to go and touch on her. They're all drinking, having fun. He's not under the pressure that, under the impression that Zach and Dre have anything going on because they haven't announced it. So he's enjoying himself. Zach decides to get jealous because Dre is out here twerking on another man in front of the man that she's dating i would be pissed off too but he gets mad and he gets jealous but he's going overboard with it because they haven't established their actual relationship they're still in the process of dating she's looking at him like you're going crazy flies telling him you know you're be you know you're acting like a bitch he's uh, talking to Dre like she's crazy like you're gonna fuck him too no that is not how you talk to a woman that you're trying to date like what is wrong with you you can pull her to the side and let her know that what she's doing is something that you don't appreciate it's hurting your feelings and since y'all are getting to know each other it is not appropriate for her to be shaking her ass in another man in front of you drinking or not but you don't sit up there and talk down to her and talk to her like you're crazy and cause a fight in a party that's not about you it was supposed to be for Charmaine but Fly and Zach now have beef 
and that beef is going to transcend the next few episodes because the next episode that we saw the preview they end up in a damn fight you got zach not backing down fly is like i'm gonna fuck you up and they're all going at it like you're not about that like that's just crazy mess and all of this drama occurring because zach and dre are choosing to now build not even build a relationship they haven't even started so jess gets him an ultimatum in the next episode we're not gonna have this ratchet situation not in this tattoo shop this is not nine mag either you guys one of you guys gotta go because you chose to put yourself in this situation and jack zach blew up so we don't know who's gonna choose to go but all i know is the episode tonight was pretty good i enjoyed it it you know i haven't been doing an review a review on this but i have enjoyed the stuff that comes with black and crew chicago I enjoy it. I like it. So I'm going to review it. Let me know what you guys think about this review. Let me know what you guys think about this episode. This is my first time. I had to catch myself up a little bit. So I'm liking these seasons so far. I think there's a new twist to it. I think it's a hell of a lot better than Love and Hip Hop. But you guys got to let me know what you think below. Comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Should I continue to do it? What you guys think? Anyway, you guys have a good evening. Love you. Bye. Check out the other videos I've done. Okay. Have a good evening.